All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today, I just wanted to talk about roof racks. There are a few items that you know I kind of thought about when choosing a roof rack and kind of configuration. Um, a lot of it really comes down to how you're going to use it. Um, I feel like a lot of times maybe you know you're not going to actually use it that much. It might not be worth it. Roof racks tend to cost a lot in the aftermarket world, um, but there are several options depending on your needs. Um, you know whether you're going to run tent boxes, you're just going to throw extra stuff up there. You know I've been through a few <laughs> configurations with the roof rack. Um, obviously right now I'm running the Chief Products roof rack, um, which just came out about a year ago. But I'll tell you what I've been using my roof rack for. When we first got the Jeep, uh, you know, I kind of just expected to go out and uh, bring a bunch of stuff in the back. Um, I didn't even know there was a whole roof rack world out there uh, until I did a little bit of research. So, you know, when I saw some of the things you could put up there, including rooftop tents, um, that kind of became my vision. Um, we had the front runner rooftop tent for about two years. We've spent over 100 nights in it. And, um, you know, during that time, we've kind of had the ins and outs of having a, a tent. We've had extra boxes. We've had um, boards, firewood, recovery gear, um, the whole gamut. So, um, you know, it kind of just really depends on the things that you want to use it for. There are a couple pros and cons to it. You know, one is the roof is probably the spot where you want to put the least amount of weight. Um, you know, we've run to the point where we've had over 300 pounds up there and also just run with nothing. Um, I think you'll find that the dynamic handling of your vehicle starts to change quite a bit once you start putting a lot of uh, weight up there. Um, if you think about your braking, you know, all that's getting thrown forward at, at a higher center of gravity when you're doing off-camber trails. Uh, it definitely feels like it weighs in more and there's kind of a lot to consider. You know, we've kind of transitioned to moving a lot of stuff down as low as possible. So even through stuff in the wheel well where it used to be um, and we're trying to really make sure that we're leaving a lot of, uh, a lot of that heavy stuff down low. Um, I used to have recovery equipment up there and the tent, and I think those are probably the two heaviest pieces. Um, when I picked up a rack, I, I looked a lot around for something that I liked aesthetically and what was available in the market. Really, um, you know, there, there's really two main styles, um, and that's kind of like a flat platform or a basket style rack. Uh, you know, they, they make variations of that. We started out with one of the Rolla baskets that you can kind of mount on the factory crossbars. And that worked out okay. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, it's you can pick one up for probably about 100 bucks and, you know, it does, it does its job. Um, it's a little bit small. I mean, the roof line on the Grand Cherokees already is a little bit small to begin with. Um, so a lot of the gear that you see people carrying around, it's, you know, you'll kind of have to finagle it a little bit on, on this Jeep, a little bit more so than some of the other platforms. Um, but that being said, you know, there's a lot, a lot of ways you can kind of maximize that space. Um, so when I was looking for roof racks a few years ago, um, the one that I liked the most was the Gobi rack. And so I kind of had that safari-esque feel. Um, and I kind of wanted to maintain that look as we uh, kind of ventured out into the into the wilderness. Before I got the rooftop tent, I ended up using a set of uh, boxes. I think they were just plano storage cases. Those were easy to strap down with some ratchets. Um, I found that when you strap down boxes with ratchets over the top, they can be a little bit cumbersome because you end up having to undo all the ratchets each time. Um, typically, I would have three ratchets on a box, two across and one, um, one lengthwise. So it kind of became a little bit of a hassle to try to get out cooking gear, recovery gear if we ever needed to. A little behind the scenes footage. That's one doggo rolling in the dirt.
That's two doggos. This one was just asleep. Hello, Stinky. Good night. Ultimately, I decided that you know we were looking for a flat style rack for a couple of reasons, um, and we, you know, we we were looking for a a longer tent that would deploy faster, um, and then b you know, something that was a little bit lower profile. I think after doing all the highway miles that we did, um, you know, and kind of living in the city, uh, we found that it was a little bit cumbersome to have the rack and the roof line kind of stick up well beyond the parking garages. Um, so, you know, when I was looking around, uh, Chief had actually come, come out with a new rack for the Grand Cherokee and they had some incredible load ratings. I mean, it's 330 pounds dynamic and over 1300 pounds static weight, um, which for a roof rack is, is pretty incredible. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend really putting that much weight on it at any given time, just again, because of the, uh, the forces that, that occur when you're driving um, and the handling differences. I think you'll find that for the most part, the less weight you keep off the roof, the better. But um, there were a couple other benefits to having a flat rack as well. Um, one, the accessories are pretty easy to mount. I mean, I didn't have to go out and buy any any crazy brackets or anything like that. Um, in fact, uh, with their T-nut kit, you can actually just slide in all of the accessories and use a single bolt to, to plant them to the rack. Um, I did so with the awning, and I did so with some of their, their attachment points. Um, the other thing I'm planning to do is kind of bolt on a tire carrier and then a uh, uh, hard case. All right, so uh, I think there's a few key things that I like about the Chief Rack um, now, that, now that I've been able to use it. Um, you know, one of them is it's definitely quieter. It's lower profile. You can fit in garages. Um, the install is very easy. It's actually uh, got two mounting rails and six planks, up to six planks if you want to use those. Um, overall, the design's entirely modular. So the chief rack is something that you can choose to build up from the base all the way to the full platform kit, um, which is a really cool option that a not, not a lot of companies make. Um, usually, you kind of have to buy their full rack kit, which ends up being pretty expensive. Um, with the Chief Rack, you can actually even use a different platform if you wanted to. Um, ultimately, you know, the mounting points with the rails are kind of going to help keep the integrity of the, uh, the load rating. Um, and, you know, we decided that we kind of wanted to keep more of the Safari-esque feel, so we, we haven't put the full platform on, but we've put on all of the rails and, and uh, you know, I think we're pretty happy with the look. So one of the other accessories that I really wanted to make sure I was able to mount on the new rack was my lights. Um, you know, I kind of had this vision to have 360 degree lights on the roof. Um, I've since changed that because I found that forward facing roof lights tend to be a, a little bit unusable, especially in weather. Um, so I've decided to kind of push those down towards the bumper. This is a very simple setup. Uh, the lights are wired to a switch on the inside, secondary battery in the trunk and all you had to do was actually run the cable through the mounting channel. There's actually uh, specific holes for the cables to go. And then all I had to do was actually insert the T-nut kit and then put in a bolt for the L-bracket. So I think there were a few pros and cons to the Gobi rack. If you're kind of deciding between the two, I just want to list my real world uh, opinions of them. It does have a set of light mounts on it. So you can mount lights in the front and the rear. The rack comes as one singular piece. So maybe that's a pro and a con. Um, you know, the pros are that it's, it's very solid. Um, everything's welded together. It's made to custom order. Um, kind of the downside to that is that it's, it comes in a very large box. So typically you'll only install the rack once, but if you ever kind of take it off or move it around, storage on that thing is um, a little bit more cumbersome. Uh, lifting it up and hoisting the install was a little bit tougher because of that. It kind of required two people. Um, I think it weighs in probably around 60 something pounds. Um, whereas kind of the, the chief rack is a little bit more uh, modular on that because each of, each of the components is pretty light and it's made of aluminum. Um, 
The Gobi rack is made of steel, so it's a it's a very solid platform. You know, the the uh, static load rating is uh, about 600 pounds. The dynamic is about 300. Um, so you're, we're kind of in the same ballpark for the dynamic range. I think the other thing we liked about the Gobi was that, uh, you know, A, I mean, it does come with a ladder when you order it. Um, we do, we did find that climbing onto the roof was a pretty common occurrence for us. Um, and then actually using the basket as, as a platform to stand on was uh, incredibly, it was awesome. Um, my, I mean, Milo would even sit on the roof while we were driving sometimes. I think a couple of the downsides to the Gobi, uh, you know, for, since it is a basket style, um, it's kind of designed to be used within itself. And what I mean by that is um, you either have to buy into the accessories that they offer, which can be pricey. I mean, it was about 150 bucks for an awning bracket. Um, you know, I wanted the sunroof insert. That was another $200. And then the axe and shovel mount was, I think, another uh, 175 So, you know, keep that in mind as you think about the to total cost of your rack. Um, you know, because it was a tube mount, you had to buy the specific mounts for it. So the reason we switched to the Chief Rack was because it's entirely modular. What that really means is that you can customize it to whatever needs you have. Um, you know, you could have two slats in front, two slats in the back, um, and then mount whatever accessories you want right into the channels. Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest draws for this rack, um, aside from the, the load ratings. The items that we are planning on mounting, uh, they'll be very straightforward to do so, and we don't really have to buy a lot of accessories for it. The Chief Products Rack actually comes in quite a bit cheaper than some of the competitors, um, depending on the configuration you get. Um, if you get it all loaded out, I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of twelve dollars or $1,300. With the flat style, obviously you can uh, easily mount past the rails. So as an example, you know, we have the awning mounted past that bracket over there, um, whereas on the Gobi rack, it was kind of a difficult task to do that. Um, you know, there's a lot of flat style racks out there. Um, you know, there's maybe a handful for the Grand Cherokee specifically. Um, I know one of the other popular ones is the front runner rack, uh, but we do have a few buddies who kind of encountered some issues with their mounting rails. Um, you know, they had an additional foot pad right here that ended up kind of denting into the roof. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, you know, there's, the, the systems are pretty similar, but you know, we found that this one to be kind of the most sound and, and as close to OEM as you could get. Um, I mean, the install was incredibly quick. The, you know, the, it uses the factory mounting points and there's no drilling. Um, and, you know, we just had to basically grab a couple of wrenches and, and put them into place. All right, so that is my review on the Chief Products Rack and kind of all the roof rack configurations that we've run. Um, if you have any comments, let us know below and uh, we'll see you next time. Is he in the shot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. You just hang out there, just lay down. It's okay. We're on the other side of the roof, so here's here's some other lights. I know the first time that Dave mounted them, he drove us into the Mojave Desert in the center of it and turned on every single light. It was so hard to capture because you were just blinded in every direction, but like I said, he, he has an affinity for adding lights. Uh, these other two mounts, so the, the shovel and the ax, we, we really don't use except to go to the bathroom. Thank you.